Debbie with Taylor by Debbie and today I'm going to show you how to paint buffalo plaid patterns on a wood piece. First thing I like to do is paint it with my base color which is a, um, a white and right now I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on over the white which will help the paint that I put on after the white not bleed. So I'm just gonna put a coat of Mod Podge on here and then we're gonna let it dry. Now this is a bunny form that came from the Dollar Tree and it all was already painted white and it has a little bit of a kind of a wood grain coming through and I like the way that looks so I'm just gonna leave it. But if you didn't want that wood grain showing through, you could paint it with a coat of Waverly chalk paint and you're going to need four colors total to paint buffalo plaid and I'm using the white that the bunny was already painted from the Dollar Tree as my base color and then I'm using Waverly chalk paint elephant, Waverly chalk paint ink and then I took some of the gray right here, the elephant gray color, and mixed it with white because you're going to need a, a color between the white and the darker gray color. And I just mixed the two of those together to get a lighter gray color. All right. So I've got this painted with just one coat of Mod Podge. And now we're going to let that dry. When it's dry, it'll be matte finish because I'm using the matte type of Mod Podge. I'll show you which one of those I used. And they do sell smaller bottles of this at the Dollar Tree. You can buy Mod Podge at any crafting store or Walmart. All right, so I'm gonna wait till this dries and I'll come right back. Okay, now you'll see once it's completely dry, that shiny, real super shiny finish is gone and it's not sticky anywhere so what the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our painter's tape and this is just standard painter's tape okay i'm going to tear the first piece and this first piece i'm gonna to have to cut it y'all my wrist is still not real strong i had carpal tunnel surgery a couple weeks ago all right I'm going to turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to take this and this is going to be what I call my spacer piece. Okay, you're going to press that down and you want to press those edges down. I mean, this is a, this is not my spacer piece. This is my first piece is the piece that you want to make sure is down really well. That part's going to stay white. Okay, then the next piece we're going to put on here is what we call... A spacer piece. This one you don't have to worry about pressing down. You're just barely going to tack it down. It's just to give you the space between the two lines. Okay, then we're going to take our next piece and every other piece when you put it down you want to make sure that you're putting it down really well and you're kind of rubbing it on to the wood to try to keep the paint from bleeding up underneath it. And then you can just take this spacer piece up, move it down to here, and then we're going to lay our next stripe piece down. And remember every other one, you want to take the time and really press it down onto the surface. Okay, then you're gonna pick up your spacer, move it down. And if you didn't buy a surface that was already painted, you'd wanna paint the surface first with white or cream, whatever color you want your base color to be. Then let that completely dry. Then put one layer of Mod Podge down and then that, let that completely dry. Okay, I don't know why I just put that spacer down so tight, y'all. <laughs> I'm not even thinking. 
every other time you just barely tap that down. Got the talking, wasn't paying attention what I was doing. Okay. And then every other one you do want to make sure you press it down really well. And I'm shaking my camera, y'all. I'm sorry. And you're going to pick up your spacer piece. Just kind of tap it down. When you get your um, pieces of tape cut or torn, you want to make sure it's long enough to go across the entire part here. Okay? Because if you don't, then it's likely, like if you use two pieces, it's likely that paint would bleed up underneath there. So just make sure your tape goes beyond the ends of your piece just a little bit on each side. Okay, and we're going to take our spacer. Almost done with this first, first part, y'all. I bet this will be our last piece. You can just tear it. You don't have to cut it, but my wrist is still a little bit weak and I can't really tear very well right now. Yeah, that's going to be our last piece. And then the bottom part will just stay white. Okay, so now we have all our stripes on there and you just want to make sure you have it pressed down really well. Okay. And then what I like to use to paint is one of these little daubers, little I don't know, paint daubers, what I call them. Usually you use them to make polka dots, but I like to use these. And you know, I like to use these um, coffee filters too. And I'm just going to get my stir stick out of the way over here. I want to dab a lot of it off and then you're just going to come over here and daub it on or dab it on however you want to say it I find if i use a brush or even one of these kind of sponge sponge brushes that i have more bleeding um, underneath the tape, but if you just dab it like I'm doing, it doesn't seem to bleed up under the tape as bad. All right, I'm going to finish painting the lighter gray on these stripes, and then I'll be right back. completely dry and then I'll be right back okay guys we're back and I've let this completely dry so now we're going to pull up the paint and you want to just pull it with a firm straight method and we're not going to be reusing these pieces of tape so you don't have to worry about saving them but look y'all see how good that works is to you know make sure you have the tape pressed down well and then let it dry completely this is always so satisfying this part <laughs> pulling up the tape and seeing the stripes now you could just leave it like this if you like stripes but today we're working on how to do buffalo plaid now see that one bled a little bit up under there but I don't think it's enough that it's gonna matter. This is a texture, it's kind of raised, so it will tend to bleed more than a smooth surface. Okay, so now we're gonna turn our bunny sideways. And I already got rid of the um, 
the lighter gray that we mixed with white. This time we're going to be using our elephant gray. Okay, so we're just going to get our same size um, painter's tape back out and find the end again. All right. And we're going to be doing stripes going up and down on the bunny this time. Okay. So your first piece will be the part that we don't paint. So you wanna press it down on that edge. Okay. Your next piece is gonna be our spacer piece. What am I doing? I'm trying to eyeball it. I'm so used to eyeballing stuff, y'all. But on this, I do recommend that you <laughs> use the spacer to get perfectly spaced lines. Okay. And when you press this down, you can actually see the grains of the wood up under the painter's tape. Um, because this one does have kind of a raised texture to the wood. And that way you know you're getting it pressed down really well if you do it with one of these little Dollar Tree bunnies like I'm doing. And y'all, putting this buffalo plaid, this is a spacer so we don't have to mash it down. Putting this buffalo plaid finish on things just makes them look so high end. And we paid a dollar twenty-five for this bunny. But when we're done with it, it's gonna look like we paid a lot more than that. Y'all, I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera a little bit. I've gotta press down. Okay, we're gonna lift up our spacer piece. And then we're gonna put it right here. Just keep on going, same process. Tap that one down. The main part you want to make sure is that's pressed down is along your edges. Y'all see how easy this is? You can do this. They sell painter's tape at the Dollar Tree. They sell it at Walmart, any home improvement store. It's not expensive. You probably already have some at your house. I know I did. I didn't even have to buy this. We already had it. like one more piece of tape and then we can paint the darker gray stripes. Just make sure we have all that pressed down really well. I think that looks good. All right, now we're gonna use our elephant. And if I'm not mixing a color, I like to just use it out of the lid. So I'm gonna get a, a clean dauber. And I bought these at the Dollar Tree, y'all. They come in a pack of three different sizes. Okay, and then we're just gonna go by and go over the part we've already painted. 
with our darker gray. And I know it almost looks like the same color gray that's on there, but y'all, it is darker. This uh, dries darker. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video now and finish painting this gray part, and I'll be right back. And then just let it dry completely, and then we'll be right back. So I'm gonna try to make sure that I get this on here evenly across, like so. Okay, and that's where we had the white to begin with when we made this. So the next piece that we put on there is gonna be our spacer. Remember the spacer, you don't really have to just kind of tack it down. You don't have to press it down really well. Okay, guys, then we're gonna put our next piece. It's important that you get the tape in the same location um, for the plaid to work out well. So when you're starting this, make sure you have that tape at the top of those ears spaced evenly so that when you come down, your tape will be in the same place as you're coming down your bunny. And now we're just going to continue to put the tape on our bunny as we've already done, and then I'll be right back. shake up our black which is the Waverly ink chalk paint this will be our last color and again I like to work out of the lid and I'm gonna get a, a new little dauber and you want to be dry with the black or the, the darkest color because it'll be the one that'll tend to bleed the most and then you're just gonna go in between where the tape is and put your black. Gonna go ahead and paint the black part and I'll be right back. I'm gonna use my hair dryer and dry it really well and I'll be right back. We're going to go ahead and take our tape off and reveal our pattern. And it is stuck to the paper. Y'all, look how cute. 
see, and that was so easy to do. I can do this. One more piece. And we took that $1.25 Dollar Tree Bunny and made it look super high-end, y'all. Isn't that cute? I hope y'all give this a try. I'll take a photo of the finished bunny. I'm just going to add a little bit of embellishments to him, and then I'll post it at the end of the video. Thank y'all so much for watching, and have a blessed day. Thank you.